So we have looked at the definitions of inner product and that of norms arising out of those inner products. However, the norm function is very general and it is not even necessary that a norm be defined using an inner product. Instead, a norm is any function that satisfies certain properties. So let us take a look at those properties. So let this denote a norm. So for example, this is a general definition and it can be applied to both vectors and matrices. So for example, if you want to say vector norm, it would be something like this. And similarly, we had uh, matrix norms, but we are not putting any subscript here with these so as to emphasize the fact that they are general norms. Then for this to be a valid norm, it is necessary that this function be defined without any domain restrictions. What does this mean? It means that there should not be any restriction on what x can be. So for example, if you are talking about vectors, then it is necessary that the domain of this be equal to Rn. So if x is a vector and you are talking about vector norms, then the domain should be Rn. Likewise, if x is a matrix and you are talking about matrix norms, then the domain should be Rm cross n if x is a m cross n matrix. Right? So there cannot be any domain restrictions. So any function which is defined over its entire domain over which the x may take values is a valid norm if it satisfies the three properties or I should say four properties. So the first is that it should be non-negative which means that x should be greater than equal to zero for all x, right? So if it is a vector, then for all x in Rn and so on. Then the second is that it should be definite. So what is the definiteness property? Definiteness property says that if norm of x is equal to zero, then it should hold or only if x is equal to zero. So only if x is equal to zero can the norm be zero. It cannot be possible that norm is zero, but X is not zero, right? The third property is the homogeneity. So, so homogeneous property, which is saying that the norm of T X, where T is a scalar and X could be a vector or similar for X matrix. This is of the form T times norm of X, right? So, so t can be arbitrary scalar and I'll put an absolute value here, right? So this is for absolute value. So t can be arbitrary scalar. So if t is negative, you have to take the absolute value, right? So this is the homogeneity property, which is saying that the scalar comes out and we take its absolute value. Then the last property is the triangle inequality. which is saying that norm of x plus y is less than equal to norm of x plus norm of y. Right, so these are the four properties that any function should define and if these are true, then we call that that function can be a valid norm. So as I said earlier, it is not necessary that a function satisfying these properties is has to arise from an inner product. It is possible that there are norms which do not have any associated inner product. So for example, this triangle property or triangle inequality in particular is uh, interesting because it allows us to define the distance function. So the distance between two elements x and y is given by norm of x minus y. Right? So distance is given by this and uh, there is also an associated definition of a norm ball. So a norm ball is the set of all x such that norm of x is less than equal to 1.
right so this is the unit norm ball i must say this is the unit norm ball right so let us look at some examples of uh, vector norms so i am we have already seen the example of the l2 norm right this was the l2 norm and we said that this is the one which is associated with the inner product because l2 norm square is the inner product of x with itself but there is also the l1 norm ball sorry l1 norm which is l1 norm of x is given by summation of i equal to 1 to n absolute value of xi right so sum of absolute values of entries of x that is the l1 norm and there is also l infinity norm which is infinity norm of x is given by uh, maximum over i of absolute value of xi right in particular both of these are not associated with any inner product so there is no inner product such that x inner product with itself would give you l1 or l infinity norms right by the way this l infinity norm is also called the chebyshev norm and uh, intermediate to these there is also the lp norm which is for general p p from 1 to infinity which takes the form absolute value of xi raised to the power p i equal to 1 to n summation and then p th root right so if you take p tending to infinity it will you will actually get this one for p tending to infinity and if you take p equal to 1 you will get the l1 norm then let us take a look at some matrix norm examples so matrix norm we have already seen one example which is the frobenius norm right this one we have already seen then there is also the sum absolute value norm so sav sum absolute value norm which is denoted as uh, sum of absolute values of the matrix xij right so this is counterpart of l1 norm but this is not called the l1 norm it is called the sum absolute value norm It's counterpart of L1 norm for matrix case. A uh, more general norm in the context of matrices is the operator norm. So operator norm looks like this. So just pay attention to this definition of operator norm. It is defined, uh, and there have to be two numbers that you have to define along with it, or you have to use along with it. it is the maximum of x u over eth norm so a this is the pth norm so p is equal to a in this case the maximum is over u subject to the constraint u b less than equal to 1 right so let me just emphasize that these are both lp norms of uh the vector x u and the u right this is also lp norm with p equal to b right and the solution of this is given by the operator norm right so this might be a new definition for many of you but don't be overwhelmed the solution of this is given by the operator norm so there are certain ways in which you can prove that this is indeed a norm and satisfies all the properties of the norm right so i leave that for later we we'll look at operator norm in de detail maybe later but uh, this is just two examples of operator norms the l2 norm for matrices is also defined in somewhat similar way as operator norm uh, in fact it is a special case of the operator norm so we'll see that later then finally i want to talk about one result which is very useful it is called the equivalence of norms the result says that uh, let a and b be some numbers right a and b be some numbers such that uh, they are greater than equal to 1 right 
then the result says that there exists so this is the symbol for there exists right so there exists some constants alpha and beta such that x b is less than equal to beta times x and then a eighth norm and greater than equal to alpha times x a norm right so in other words what we are saying is that you take any norm any two norms then you can bound one of them in terms of the other one both upper and lower and there will always exist some constants alpha and beta to do that note that alpha and beta are constants which means that alpha and beta would not depend on x they may of course depend on n a and other things right they, but they'll not depend on x so this is a general result right this uh, result is actually very useful for convergence analysis of algorithms of optimization algorithms so basically what it is saying is that uh, if you can uh, establish the result for one particular norm then it is as good as doing it for all possible norms right this result allows some generalization